Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines, several killed as protests against police killing rage on in Colombia. Bob Woodward's book claims Donald Trump downplayed the seriousness of COVID-19. Israeli prison authorities confiscate possessions of protesting Palestinian prisoners. Julian Assange's trial comes to a halt over COVID-19 concerns. And four-month four -month emergency declared in Lesbos following fire at refugee camp. We begin with Colombia, where massive protests have broken out following the killing of 46-year-old law student and taxi driver Javier Ordonez. The incident was recorded by Ordonez's friends and shared widely on social media, leading to a strong backlash from the broad sectors of Colombian society. By the afternoon of September 9th, people across Bogota and other cities were on the streets protesting the latest episode of state violence and brutality. The police response was brutal and latest numbers say anywhere between 5 and 7 people have been killed and 19 injured with firearms and around 45 detained. In different neighbourhoods, people marched to the local police stations and participated in protests, banging pots and pans and raising chants against the police and demanding justice. According to reports from the Human Rights Foundation, PASOS, in several locations across the city, the national police began to shoot indiscriminately with firearms against protesters. They also reported that the police attacked human rights defenders and tampered with their electronic evidence, devices. The killing of the law student and father of two comes in a particularly tense time in Colombia where 53 massacres have been registered in 2020. On September 7th alone, three were reported which left 12 fatal victims. The social and economic conditions in the country have eroded due to record, flow, eroded record flows due to the coronavirus pandemic and lockdown. In our next story, according to a new book authored by journalist Bob Woodward, President Donald Trump knew about the deadly nature of the coronavirus disease much before the World Health Organization declared it a global pandemic. The audio recordings of Trump's interview with Woodward, which had been published in the Washington Post on Wednesday, reveals that he deliberately downplayed the seriousness of the disease in public. You don't want to see panic because there's no reason to be panicked about. According to the book titled Rage, Trump got his briefing on the deadly nature of the disease from his national security advisor on January 28th. In his telephonic conversation with Woodward on February 7th, Trump had admitted that COVID-19 was more deadly than your strenuous flu. It goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. It's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus, you know, so this is deadly stuff. The book claims that despite getting repeated warnings from his intelligence agencies in February, Trump tried to downplay the threat in order to avoid panic. On February 27th, he publicly claimed that the coronavirus was going to disappear one day. It's going to disappear one day. It's like a miracle. It will disappear. Trump had also tried to force the states to reopen their economies and lift the lockdowns imposed to prevent the spread of COVID-19 later when the number of infections and deaths were going up. The downplaying is believed to have delayed the implementation of the necessary measures to control the outbreak in the U.S. Failure to contain it on time has made the U.S. the worst affected country in the world today, with over 190,000 deaths and over 6.3 million infections. The, disease in take, the delay in taking effective measures has also impacted the U.S. economy in an unprecedented manner, with high unemployment rates and an estimated 32% annual contraction in its GDP. On Wednesday, protesting prison inmates at the Ofer prison in the occupied West Bank woke up to the confiscation of their fans and other electrical appliances by Israeli prison authorities. The prisoners had been protesting the death of one of their fellow detainees under mysterious circumstances. In order to suppress the protests, Israeli forces stormed the cells of approximately 850 prisoners and confiscated their property. The incident led, to, led in to injuries to 26 prisoners. According to Kadura Fares, the head of the Palestinian Prisoner Society, the Israeli actions are not at all new or surprising. Fares said that the prison authorities consider letting the prisoners make use of fans and other electrical appliances and fans to be a privilege rather than a basic human right. Prisoners find these appliances necessary considering the extremely high temperatures which go up to 40 degrees Celsius in overcrowded Israeli jails during summer. Since the beginning of the pandemic, these abysmal and dangerous conditions have escalated due to the risk of prisoners contacting COVID-19. The virus was already found in several Palestinian inmates. As of Tuesday, 29 prisoners have contracted the virus inside Israeli prisons. And now we go on to the trial of Julian Assange. The fourth day of the extradition trial of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange came to a halt after the husband of one of the US lawyers was reported to have come down with COVID-19-like symptoms. The trial is expected to resume on the 14th of September. The third day of the trials concluded yesterday after the presenting of multiple witness testimonies. The defense team representing Assange presented two more academics and activists as witnesses. They focused on spelling out the political overtones of the WikiLeaks indictment and how this could affect press freedom in the US. The first witness to testify was Paul Rogers, an expert in international security and a professor emeritus at the University of Bradford. 
Rogers' testimony drove home the point that Assange's indictment and prosecution in the U.S. is based on the political motives of the incumbent administration of Donald Trump. Rogers pointed out that the Afghan war logs and the Iraq war logs published by WikiLeaks and Assange's own political opinions clashed very strongly with successive U.S. governments. The next witness was Trevor Tim, co-founder of the Freedom of the Press Foundation. He proceeded to point out how the extradition attempt and the prosecution of Assange will directly affect press freedom. Tim pointed out that advocates of press freedom fear how the prosecution of Assange could have grave implications. He pointed to the fact that several U.S. administrations had threatened to prosecute journalists for publishing classified information but never did it. He also brought up how President Trump and officials in his administration have repeatedly called the press their enemies to show the intense acrimony between the administration and the news fraternity. And finally, on Wednesday, the largest migrant camp in Greece in Moria, with a population of around 13,000, was destroyed in a fire, leaving the migrants without any shelter. There are disputed reports about the cause of the fires. The migration minister was quick to blame the refugees and the migrants and told reporters that incidents began with asylum seekers. But he remained tightly on the reports of arson which were aimed at destroying the camps. Meanwhile, the deputy mayor for, uh, the deputy mayor for civil protection believes that the arsonists are behind the fires, telling reporters that the fires were premeditated. He further added that arsonists had taken advantage of the strong winds. In response to the disaster, the Prime Minister called for an emergency meeting for further discussion and sent several ministers for further assessment of the situation. The European Commission President Ursula von Leyen, in her statement to the reporters, said that the priority lies in the safety of those left without shelter. Moria has been on lockdown since September 2nd after one resident test tested positive for COVID-19. Since then, another 35 have been tested positive in the camp. Officials called an extra law enforcement to prevent migrants from reaching the nearby town. A four-month state of emergency was declared on Wednesday following the fires. The camp in Moria has been a huge source of controversy. Right-wing elements have continuously tried to ensure that the migrants and the refugees who are escaping from conflicts are evicted and deported. On the other hand, left-wing organizations including the Communist Party of Greece have strongly rallied in favor and in support of the migrants. Many organizations have demanded that the camp be abolished and the migrants be allowed to go to Europe. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, 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 yeah